In this video series, I'll show you how to make a retro smart 80s robot using a Raspberry Pi, an Arduino, and the Google Voice Kit. I always say, if you can't make friends, make them. Yeah, I agree. Around Christmas of 1986, I walked into a local Radio Shack and I saw this. This is Radio Shack's exclusive Roby Senior computer programmable and remote control robot. This guy made the top of my Christmas list right away, but unfortunately I changed my mind at the last minute and I wanted a scooter instead, so I never actually got Roby Senior that year. About 35 years later, I finally had the opportunity to pick one up on eBay and I thought he would make a great platform for a modern, autonomous, smart robot. Roby Sr. was actually computer programmable even in his day using a combination of analog and digital technology. Here's how he worked. Turn him on. He boots up and makes a sound. Now then you have options. You can use him as sort of just a regular remote control device. He could go forward, backwards, turn right and left. which is kind of cool in itself, but what you can also do is using his tape deck, you could record the movements that you input and play them back as a program later on, which is kind of cool, but it's not up to par with what we, can, we would consider programmability today. He also had some controller functions in addition to his directional. He has light up eyes, he has one pre-programmed sound. And with a push to talk function, you can put your voice through the robot and it's supposed to sound like a robot voice, but I think it really just sounds like my own voice put through a really bad speaker. And that's pretty much all that Roby Sr. can do. And I think because of that, the novelty wore off really quickly, probably the day after Christmas. And we find these Roby Seniors on eBay relatively inexpensively and in pretty good shape. Um, and I think that's because the novelty wore off. And I think that year is when Nintendo came out as well. So that probably put a dent in Roby's career in the average child's household. So what we're going to do in this project is take Roby completely apart, remove all of the old equipment, and input new equipment. As I said before, I'll be putting in a Raspberry Pi for his higher functions, an Arduino for his autonomous mobility, and we're going to have the Google Voice Kit installed so we can use voice commands to tell him what to do and also get all of the Google information we get from any Google device right from our Roby Senior. Now what I'm going for with this product is I want to maintain his 1980s aesthetic, but I also want to upgrade him. So I'm going to do my best to keep that balance between upgrades and his original look. So the first step in this project is to take Roby apart. And the good news is that's really easy to do. The entire robot uses the same screws throughout the entire body and chassis, so you don't have to worry about getting anything mixed up. And there are very few screws to take the body apart, and disassembly is really easy, which is one of the great things about this robot. There's plenty of internal space, once we remove the electronics, to put in our new electronics, and there's a lot of external space for our new sensors and things like that. So he comes apart into three different sections. There's the base section, which includes the motor drive and wheels, the body that includes the electronics and power, and then the head section, which right now is pretty much aesthetic. It's just the lights for the eyes and the mouth. It doesn't really have any function. We're going to change that, though, and make use of this. I've already taken most of the screws out. The first step would be to remove the eight screws from the bottom of the base so that we can lift the body off. And when we do that, there will be a wire attached to the base, and all of these unplug just by pulling them out. They're not hard soldered because they're designed to be interchangeable and serviceable. And I still have screws falling out all over the place. So we're going to take this and just put it aside for a minute and talk about the base because this is sort of going to be a robot in and of itself. I'm going to be using the Arduino and some sonic sensors to turn this base into the autonomous aspect of the robot. And then once that's set up, we're going to integrate that back into the body and we're going to connect that to the Raspberry Pi 
which is going to be able to tell the base when it should be in autonomy mode and when it should not. All of this will be handled by voice commands. So I'm going to set that aside. We're going to continue taking apart Roby and we'll come back to the base. The next step is to remove the battery hatch and uh, the battery inside. Now I've taken this battery out because these were old acid lead batteries and they were pretty much dangerous and, and far too old uh, primitive for our modern uses. Once we've removed the battery hatch, you'll see that we have room for one AA battery. There's a fuse here. The AA battery is just for his clock face on the front, which we'll get to. The fuse is probably not very useful for us, but I'm going to leave it for now. And we're going to be recycling this battery space. It's just one screw that holds that in, and we'll come back and look at that in detail later. Now, once you remove the screws from the back of the robot, the front and back will separate from one another. That's going to drop off the arms and allow us to lift out the neck and head assembly. So we just sort of wiggle that apart and that's going to separate the two halves. Now be careful because there are wires connecting both. I don't want to break anything yet because if this is the first time you've seen one of these, you kind of want to know how it works. So we're going to be careful taking that apart. Once we've separated the front from the back, we can slide the arms out. They come out pretty easily. Now one thing I want to mention, and I don't know how well this is going to come up in the video, you can see that the color of the plastic has over time changed. These old toys from the 1980s, uh, often as a result of being exposed to UV rays, have yellowing. Now this Roby Senior has very little yellowing, but I think I actually swapped arms with a different Roby Senior, uh, and you can see that they don't exactly match. What I want is I want this to look brand new like it came out of the box on Christmas morning yesterday. And in order to do that, parts may need whitening. Now I'm going to have a whole video on how to whiten these parts without damaging them. We're going to be doing that with a solution of hydrogen peroxide paste and some UV lighting. That's a whole project separate in and of itself, but we can address that. But for now, I just wanted to point out that part of a restoration is to be getting him uh, to look as new as we can get and that's going to be addressed as we go. We can take the other arm off by just sliding in now and the entire arm assembly comes off. And finally we can slide the head toward the back and that will release it from there. Now we'll have two wires going down into the Roby and what I'm going to do is cut to a close-up of that so you can see how that's all connected. Inside the robot, we have three wires connected to the head. And then we have wires that are connecting the front to the back of the robot. The yellow one is the antenna, so we're just going to unscrew that, and that'll take care of that. These are to the eye lights and the mouth light, and they also will unplug from the main board, so I'm not too concerned about those. And then finally, we have some plugs here that are going to our electrical inputs. Now all this can be pretty easily removed without breaking any wires. Everything is on a plug of some kind or screwed in. And so that's the next project. So once I have those taken off, I'll show you what that looks like. So now we have them apart, we can see what's inside. Again, we have the tape deck up front. And this drawer that pulls out has the entire tape deck responsible for recording and playback. It's very mechanical, very sophisticated, and very 80s. It interfaced with the circuit board in here, which actually has a microprocessor built in. And what it did was take the analog information that we input from the remote, turned it into digital information that it stored on the cassette tape, which we could play back to review the commands that we input. And that's as programmable as he gets. And as I said before, it's not what we would consider programmable by today's standards, but it certainly was a really, really interesting mix of 80s technology at the time. We don't really need any of this. So what we're going to be doing is removing the circuit board, which is on top of the tape deck drawer. It is connected to the front timer assembly. And I'm not sure if we're going to reuse this timer or what exactly we're going to do with this. Um, for now, we're going to leave it in place because structurally it's kind of holding everything together. But I hope to be able to find a use for it and hopefully I can remove that and use this area to put one of our sonic sensors which will allow him to know where he is uh, in a room, uh, avoid crashing into objects. 
That all has to be taken out. It takes several screws. There is a speaker back here. I'm going to leave this speaker in because the Google Voice kit that we're going to use can just be attached to this speaker. The Google Voice kit comes with its own speaker, but since this is already installed, it's slightly smaller than the speaker that Google Voice comes with, but it really doesn't matter. It's plenty loud. We're going to just kind of leave it in place and reuse it. Now, we're going to be reusing the drawer as well. So what I'm going to do is a little bit of cut and slice work on the drawer because I want to be able to use this space for our computers, for our Arduino, for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I want this to sort of be an available space so the drawer will slide out and let me work on those things, let me work with wires, let me plug things in. And then when it's in sort of a closed position, I'll still have access to plug my computer wires my leads into those computers, the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi, um, have them available but sort of hidden, but you'll still be able to see all the good parts. So I think it'll be a nice mix, but it's kind of complicated and that's going to be a video in and of itself to show how I did that because the truth is I have more than one of these guys to work with and I sort of mangled the first one and learned my lesson. So that'll be a separate video, but we are going to be reusing this entire mechanism, including the drawer, we're just going to be taking the, uh, the uh, mechatronics out of it. Now the back section, pretty cut and dry, has wires in place, and we're going to leave these because a lot of these can be reused. We can hook up our new battery power through these, power our board through these. So unless I'm going to be taking this in complete, completely apart for bleaching, um, I'm going to leave these things connected. And since this one's pretty white, and again, I have several Robies, I probably wouldn't need to bleach these, which means I don't have to remove any of this. This is in nice shape, and so I'm going to leave it as it is. That finally leaves us with just the head. And right now, the head doesn't do much of anything. It's just uh, two old-fashioned flashlight light bulbs for the eyes, and then a tiny, tiny red LED for the mouth. So we're going to be reusing all that, but I wanted to put blue LEDs in the eyes. The LEDs are going to take a lot less power, and of course, nobody uses incandescent flashlight bulbs anymore. Um, so that's going to conserve power. It's going to look a little cooler. And then for the mouth, we're probably going to put in a white or RGB multicolor light uh, LED that can be controlled from the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi. I also wanted to put the uh, ears or the microphones for the Google Voice Kit into his ears. His ears are removable. And on that note, these ears are usually the most yellowed thing on these Robies when you find them on eBay. Um, these are usually the parts that, that are the most discolored because um, of ultraviolet light hitting them predominantly. Uh, and they take quite a bit of effort to clean. But what I'm going to be doing is probably drilling some very, very tiny holes into the ears to enable the Google Voice Kit to have two input microphones so it can hear. And later on, we're actually going to be teaching Roby how to know which direction to turn. If you address him and say, hey, Roby, he'll know to turn left or right based on the inputs from the two different microphones. So that's coming as well. So the head is going to get smarter uh, as we go. But right now, it, it really is just sort of a couple of light bulbs. Now, since I have several Robies, most of my Robies have the mask, this clear dome in place, uh, except for one, which had a broken mask when I received it. And he actually is kind of cool if you don't put the mask on him. He does have a face. And because the mask isn't present, uh, we'll probably do sort of like a B project, a Roby B that doesn't have the mask. And I'll make use of the fact that the face is exposed, and I probably can add a few sensors and things like that to that face that really wouldn't work with the mask over it. So now we begin the building part. We're going to take the base of the robot, which has the four wheels and two motors inside. Using an Arduino, a motor H bridge, and some sonic sensors, we're going to make sort of a little robot out of this alone, and it's going to handle the autonomy aspect of the robot. It'll be an obstacle avoidance robot that'll allow Roby to sort of roam around and hopefully not bang into anything. Once that's done, we'll be able to integrate that into Roby. In the meantime, we'll be taking Roby down into all his individual pieces and whitening all of the yellowed parts that we may have to deal with before we can put them all back together. So, next time we start programming.